Morning all, and welcome to today's Sunday Q&A from a different location. I'm upstairs, because I'm having a nightmare with the printer. <laughs> right, so here's the thing. I finally figured out that it was pretty and blurry. So then I cleaned the heads, and I did the adjustment, and the, the aligned the heads, cleaned the heads. Then I thought, well, then I realised the printer was printing fine. It was a problem coming from YouTube, uh, from the from the, the the Microsoft from Word. Then I realised that some of Word was printing right, but some Word wasn't. And then I realised the problem seems to be that when I now copy cut the comments out of YouTube and paste them into Word, it doesn't work. So I don't know why. And then I thought, well, so I'm thinking, oh, I've got to get this done. It's been, it's been a very really busy day. It's going to be a, it's a lot going on. Mm. Uh, I'll get this done. Oh, by the way, yeah, sorry it's late, <laughs> but um, there was a lot going on yesterday. We decided to paint my, we decided, my wife, decided we were going to paint all of the ceilings in the back of the house. Excellent. So me, Mole, and Mole's boyfriend, Dave, and Edwin Rollers. <laughs> it looks great, but I've got to do the good, well, you don't care. Um, so what I'm doing now is I've got the phone here, which makes some sense, and here underneath is the computer with a screen, which means... It's, it was environmentally friendly. I can read it straight off the screen. It's got it in my mouse. I'll be like a newsreader. And so if I could just get this on an auto queue, we'd be laughing. But, I mean, this might be the way forward now. Or um, I might solve the problem. You know, like you have certain problems where you're banging away and banging away and banging away. You think, hold on a second. Why am I driving myself mad? There's a way around this. I just do, I, you know, rather than going right, I just go left. Oh, yeah, but I always used to be able to go right. It's annoying me that I can't go right. No, just go left. Forget about it. So... Uh, what we got? Question of the week this week. Hey, it's working. Uh, question of the week from Paul Paul Oldfield. It says, hi, Pete. Uh, what a lovely home you have. Thanks, Paul. This is the upstairs. Um, <laughs> he said, secondly, um, what would you say about getting in a non-Euro 6 van and which size? Um, and by 72 says... I don't normally read the responses, but this is the response. He says, if you don't get a Euro 6 van in London, you'll be paying £12.50 every time you leave the house. Get a Euro 6 is a no-brainer. Uh, the van would be best if you were based... Um, uh, hang on a second. Van would be best if you're b based in London prices of Euro 6 van, uh, much higher if someone's dying out. Well, look, the thing is, um, there's, there's a little caveat to that. Because <clears throat> we're in the Euro 6s now, and I always thought, oh, great to get the Euro 6. But so, Paul, we'll be doing your own video. Paul Oldfield. Hey! We'll do your own video on that about Euro 6 fans. My, my, my current up to date thinking on Euro 6 fans for what it's worth, which means it will be long or wrong, or at least largely erroneous. Uh, last week's mistakes. <laughs> Hello, Nick at London Creative, who says, nice video, Pete. Well done, and um, I don't want to reverse. It's uphill and backwards. Shocking have to reverse backwards. <laughs> what is the world coming to? Now, I'll be honest with you. If I do have to reverse, I tend to prefer reversing forwards because it's much easier because you can see where you're going. But, you know, if the worst case scenario, you do have to reverse backwards. It's just part of the job. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> uh, right, so... This week's video was on private jobs. I'm just going to write my timestamps down because I've got a piece of paper here. Private jobs. Um, Peter Ashmore says, oh, this is like, should you, this is also tying in, which should you go on the exchange? Peter Ashmore says, you can't make money on the CX unless you co-load. Um, domain name guy says, he said, I'm curious you got the problem with the co-loading thing. You, have, you can do it, but you have to get permission from both parties. You can't just go in and do it. We've done that before. Uh, domain name guy says, a courier could, could always give two prices when they give a price, e.g. like the dedicated price, so get there as soon as possible, or the colo price, which might take a little bit longer, and the courier could pick up someone else's pallet and slightly cheaper uh, if the customer doesn't mind sharing. This does come up sometimes where it comes up on the, um, the jobs, and it, it says happy with co-loading, get there any time, and they are looking for a better price. There is also an idea that, you know, that there could be a part of the CX, which was more of um, not a dedicated vehicle. But what strikes me is a lot of the time they want it dedicated, they want it there as soon as possible, and they want it there like, like you're loading from, like, you know, Amazon. You've got 150 parcels on board. They want it for nothing. So and the scary thing is if they did bring in this co-loading thing, would they want it even cheaper? We're cheap enough already, aren't we, boys? 
Boys and girls, shocking. I don't know. Anyway, uh, Leach, he says, on the subject of things, he said, I priced one job last week and the shipper texts me saying, you've got the job, but he's still waiting for his customer to pay him. Uh, he, 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 yeah, so I think he's, he's, he's behind on his invoice. Um, yeah, he wasn't going to pay me for another 38 days. Oh, sorry, 30 days. I truly believe these shippers are getting paid almost straight away, but are choosing to hold payment for us drivers. It depends. Some people pay instantly. Some people pay at the end of the week. Some people, three months later, you're still chasing them. And it's the same. I imagine most shippers have got, they might have 10 different customers, all of which behave completely differently. And, you know, so it, it depends on their customers. And a lot of, some people just want to pay because it keeps their head straight, job's done, got that paid, that's it. I can, I can draw a line under it. Some people want to draw it out for as long as they possibly can. Depends on the customer. Uh, Paul Oldfield, he's your man again, to the one with the question. He says, he says, I've been quite interested in getting into this work and looked into the CX quite a bit. Uh, what I really don't like is there's no minimum rate, so shippers can get ridiculous rates on the job. I think the CX should have a minimum depending on the size of the van, and they should try their hardest to police members, operate syndicates and bidding low and giving work out to non-members. They kind of try to do the thing with the syndicates with the trusted. It doesn't work, but they're trying to do it. As for rates, it doesn't necessarily mean a syndicate. It just might be that your fool's lucky and you think, I so want that job, I'll give him a really good price. And the problem is, ultimately, end of the line, it is an auction platform. It is, you know, sort of, it is, the idea is you bid for jobs. Like if you're like any other auction, like you're going to go and bid for a car, or you're going to go and bid for some furniture or, a, or, or, or an old master, a Rembrandt, it's an auction platform. And in which case it's going to go for what anyone's, is either the goods are going to go for what someone is prepared to pay, and on an auction platform, this is like a Dutch auction, which is kind of like no, it's not like a Dutch auction, is it? No, it's not. The, this one is like um, this will go for the cheapest I can get it for. That's what it is. We don't like it, but we're stuck with it. And now I think there might be other platforms out there which will say this is the job. In which case, then it's a first come, first served situation. You could find yourself equally frustrated. You could go, oh, that's a job. That's perfect. Mate. Oh, it's really gone. I would have done it for cheaper than that. That that's already gone for that money. I'd have done it for like you know that's that's gone for eighty quid. I'd have done that for sixty. God, blimey! See, I mean, it, I think if it was the other way around, we'd be moaning. So, I'm, I'm, I'm probably wrong. Usually, right? Should you go on a CX? This naturally believes me. I mean, the, the, your man Paul's thinking about joining it. Should you go on a CX? Um, this was like last week's video, and um, there's a lot more carrying on than it does from time to time. Uh, Steve Bradley Curious is definitely definitely not. Honestly, um, no more. It's way too dear now. Maybe before COVID. Well, I, yeah, I joined way before COVID. In fairness, it actually kept me working through COVID because we did the Argos. Do you link on the Argos? Um, Buy72 said, I thought the Curious Exchange was for experienced couriers who need extra contacts. I've been in the game for 25 years and on the exchange for 14 years. It's, uh, it's great for contacts. And if you do a good job, shippers will call you directly. They will call you directly. It's not always a good thing. Sometimes you get a rapport going with them and they start asking you to do it cheaper. <laughs> always. Just sometimes. Some people are lovely. Um, Peter Ashmore says, again, just needs minimum price per mile and the problem solved. You can still be bidding more, uh, but the shippers can't pay less. I think we have to do a video on this, you know. Nice. Hmm. Video. I'll have to try and remember. I'm going to write that down. I have no idea when I come back to it what that's going on. I'm going to oh, an auction video. What does that mean? It doesn't mean anything, does it? it doesn't mean. Um, just, for example, one pound twenty per loaded mile for a long wheelbase. Any less, um, with a few holdups, you could easily be on less than minimum wage. It's true. That is true. Just, I think we need to look into this a little. I can't believe I'm saying this for the amount of times we've talked about it. But I think we kind of need to we need to sort of open this up a little bit. Uh, Kong says, um, "Not in a million years. Don't waste your time. I've just had my operator's license, and I wish I'd never bothered. Too many people working for peanuts and undercutting each other. Motorways are full of Ivicos from Poland and Romania with sleeper pods. They're putting me out of business. Um, so he's not happy about that." Um, I don't see us rushing there. It's I'm fed up of um, how hard working they are. Um, 
The thing about this one, and I've said it before, Connie, is the our food is same pet principle, which is like in the 80s when we had a load of builders that weren't doing so great in sort of like, you know, just weren't doing so great because it was like a bit of a recession going on, but Germany was having a building boom. We all moved over to Germany and started building their houses, and the Germans got the ump about it because it's a bit like, well, you know, they're coming in <laughs> and sort of often do it for less, and they're doing our jobs. It's an open market. There's a lot of things we might not like. We might not like the fact that it's not fair you don't get the right, right price per mile. We might not like the fact that... Um, other people may come in and do the jobs for less because they can. But it is what it is. And it's no, you know, you say, I wish it wasn't like that. I wish, I wish a lot of things weren't like that. I wish that we all could um, work together, uh, build a greater future, work in peace and harmony, and then sit around in fields of daisies singing the Coke song. But life isn't like that. <laughs> What we have to do is we have to deal with the way it is rather than the way that we wish it was. And that is what it is. You know, it's kind of thing like, you know, so it, it doesn't work. I, I stopped being a market trader, so I decided to go and join the exchange. I imagine there's lots of people when I joined, it went, oh, great, another Luton van driver from Luton. Oh, that's another, that's another job I'm going to lose. What else was I supposed to do? <laughs> I've got a family to feed and my market. Who wants market traders anymore? When's the last time anyone bought anything off a market? You know, oh, I just went down and bought some socks. No, you got it from Amazon. Um, it is what it is, and we just have to deal with what it is. Uh, Dale Steele says the Courier Exchange is not designed as a backload site. You should, you wouldn't pay two k a year for just backloads. Ninety nine percent of the jobs are advertised as hot shot, not backload. You keep saying it's backload, Pete. It's totally wrong. You would be right in saying the rates are often backload rates. A backload job cannot also stipulate no co-load CX terms which it does which but CX does say no co-load doesn't it really um, which only doubly confirms it's not a backload site you're quite right in that um, score Dale um, I think what I'm trying to say is it was originally designed as a backload site or the whole principle was a bit like someone had a business idea of like hang on a second there's a load of lorries driving back empty if we could actually put the drivers in contact with some with some loads that'd be great but you're right the hot shot thing is nonsense you can't turn around to somebody it is one of my pet hates when they say because you can list it as a hot shot or a backload and they go needs to be collected between eight and nine needs to be there as soon as possible and they list it as a backload well, you're listening to a backload just because you want it cheap. That's not a backload, is it? That's that's a courier job. <laughs> if you're saying there's a firm out there, um, I think it's called Three to Five Days, so it can be picked up any time this week, delivered there any time next week. That's a backload, but or is a backload just the load that you get, which is going back? In which case, if you're delivering to Milton Keynes at like five or six o'clock in the morning, you, there's one coming up between eight and nine going to your home. Is that a backload? I don't, the, the truth of the matter is the term's academic, isn't it, really? We're kind of asking the wrong question. Um, it works for people and it doesn't work for others. Um, what it actually is and whether it makes any money, well, it's kind of down to you, isn't it, really, I suppose. Um, Peter Franklin says, I only... <laughs> Peter Franklin says... <laughs> I only really use it for backloads. Well, there you go. For Peter, it's a backload site. Or if a job comes up that's going to a place that I'd really like, so I do a bit of fishing, then I'll bid on it if I've got a quiet day, and I only bid on short mile jobs between 30 and 100 miles, then it's possible to make a reasonable day out of it. But I don't know how anyone can make a living only working on the CX. Well, there you go, guys. There's your, and ladies, there's your opinions. Should you join on a CX? It strikes me it's not the easiest thing to do. Although Domain Name Guy did one later on, and I think I might even turn that into a separate video. Because I thought it was a reasonable point. That's if I can print it out. But I can't print it out anymore. <laughs> Let's see how we go with that one, shall we? I have to try and solve the print out problem. Right, now we come to a new regular part of the show, Vans. It's not actually a regular part of the show, it's trucks, but instead of talking about trucks today, we're talking about vans. It's partly to do with my constant terrain about the Ford Transit Custom being the van equivalent of a fish knife. It looks good, but it's totally useless. Um, 
And it's the 1994 says, a Euro 5 Ford Transit Custom 2013-2016 are ridiculously reliable. They run on a chain, so no belt problems. And super, he said, I've covered 165,000 miles in mine. It's mechanically sound. Mine is the long wheelbase variant, three metres low space. And the previous comment is indeed correct. There is no other van in the class that can carry as much weight. Even a bigger class van like a Mercedes Sprint, you put 800 kilos on it and it's sitting low. In a custom, it looks comfortable with that kind of weight and custom drives brilliantly. Uh, Godzilla says, Ford Customs. I had a Transit Connect high top, 55 high plate, and we put it in with minimum fuss, uh, a Honda CRF450. A friend had a Transit and found it was harder to get the same Honda into the back. It struggled with very poor headroom. Um, Ford Customs look fantastic for a van, but aren't what you'd call reliable as there's beyond loads up for uh, grabs with there's loads up for grabs with blown engines great for great for up to 125,000 then afterwards it's a lottery the thing about Ford Customs is secretly I quite like them they're lovely looking vans uh, my boss has kind of got one which he uses as like you know it's just, it's a, if in fairness I always said if I, my ideal car would probably be just like a flatbed truck so I like them pickups. But really, the van makes an awful lot more sense. You can get four people in the front of it comfortably. You can, It looks cool, the four customers going. It's like the aid scene, isn't it? Get a black one with a red slash down the side. Dun, dun, dun. You open up the back, you can stick your rubbish in, your garden rubbish in. Anyone needs moving, it kind of makes some sense. Um, as a courier van, I don't know how well it works. I, I think what scares me is the price of the things. They, I mean, they look great, but they're like crazy money. I just I sort of... But, yeah, no, I, I, please take my four custom comments with a pinch of salt. Truth be told, I quite like them, really. Uh, right. Miscellaneous. Check me time stamp. Um, Burrito Senya says, uh, Hi, Pete. Currently drive a Luton van and looking to get into HGV self-employed. Was just wondering, is it a big learning curve or is anything... Oh, sorry about that. I'm having a bit of a day of it today. Um... Yeah, video stopped, and then I realised that my phone memory was full because of the recycle bin hadn't been emptied. I'm just having it. I've got gremlins in. What can you do? Anyway, where was we? Burrito Senior. I'm going to have to flex all this together. It's probably going to make no sense. Never does, anyway. Um, Burrito Senior said, I picked Curry Driver Luton Van and looking into getting HGV self employed. Big learning curve is anything I should look out for. It's a big learning curve. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure I'm the right person to ask. Um, but there's plenty of videos out there that show you the mistakes that I made and hopefully you won't make them, in which case you'll end up in a better position. As Asimor says, are you back to being an owner driver operator or are you still with a friend? No, I'm an employee now. I'm an owner driver. Yeah. I work for a guy that I met on the exchange when I was running my own firm. And once it all went wrong, he said, well, come and work for me. And that's exactly what I'm doing. So... Uh, where it leads from here, I don't know. But um, whether I go back to being an owner driver on my own again, I don't think so. I've done it, if you know what I mean. I think if I was going to move on, I would do something completely different. For the meantime, what I've got is okay. Um, Stephen EB6 says, if you're tramping in a van, find a pure gym. Uh, get a training session in and shower before you start the day. If not pure gym, find a local gym or a pool. Starting early, train and shower the night before. Sorted. You're forgetting about the van gym there, <laughs> Steve. I did a video on the van gym. Um, the lorry gym. Yeah, don't take it too seriously. If I can actually sort this out, I'll do your link. Uh, the main name guy. He's got the one that's a couple of reasons why people join the exchange. And I'd like to try and get that one off if I can. I think I'm going to make this kind of short now because everyone's going to be getting up soon and I'm going to have to sort this one out. So um, so the main thing, if I can find a way of getting this and print it, I'll do a little video on that. A couple of reasons why people should join the career exchange. Good one. Um, sorry if I don't get out to it, but thanks for your input, mate. Uh, and, and finally, we're getting nearly in there. Jim on the run says, thanks for the mention, Pete. Um, love the sunny Q&A this morning. And Steve Campbell says, this is in conclusion, Steve Campbell says, it sounds like Jim on the run drives for a place I used to drive for when I drove a seven and a half ton of Tago at a Washington hospital up to Edinburgh. I think the depot is in Birmingham somewhere. It used to be called Booper, but now it's called Spire Healthcare. I didn't know people was now Spire. Well, you learn something new every day. Guys, I'm going to call it there. I've got to try and chop what it's together. A million other things to do. But we'll get there in the end. 
<laughs> I've, got to, I've just got to find a way. In fairness, I'm, it's not the end of the world. I will either learn um, how to get the comments copied and paint and print them all in case we're back downstairs, or just do it from upstairs. I had to block the window out because it was too light. So I thought, I think, oh, one of them days. Never mind. In the meantime, get this on. <laughs> do the rest of Sunday. Maybe get a little bit of a rest in, and then tomorrow, back to taking care and taking money.